Here's how I would learn to code if I was starting from scratch and wanted to get a software engineering job in six months. Nobody talks about this, but the best way to start coding isn't Python or JavaScript or C++. It's actually all of them. Okay, hear me out. There's no benefit at all in starting to learn Python and then giving up coding altogether because you found it boring, okay? Net gain is zero. It's actually negative because you just lost a couple of days pursuing a dead end. The most determining and significant factor I see in current engineers in the industry is interest and curiosity. You have to start there. And to account for that, I'll give you my full list of recommended starting points for most common branches of technology in just a second. But start asking yourself what you find interesting. What drew you to this video? Why do you want to become a software engineer? Got that? Okay, let's dive in. My goal today is to share with you a very focused framework to learn the most impactful and relevant skills I found in my journey to become a software engineer, to cut out as much of the noise as possible and get you to that tech job as efficiently as possible. It even includes a tier list of tech skills to focus on because, well, science. Oh, and you should be able to follow this framework completely for free. Okay, so we talked about finding what you're interested in, but what do you actually start studying after that? A good starting point is to search online how to learn to code for whatever technology you're interested in. But I'm here to save you time, so here's the summary of my experience and research. Websites and web apps, Codecademy's Learn JavaScript course, backend development, Hard one, but I'd recommend starting with Programming with Mosh's Python course, iOS or Mac apps, Apple's own Swift curriculum, Android apps, Codecademy's Learn Kotlin course, Data Science or Machine Learning, also Programming with Mosh's Python course, Windows Development, Microsoft C Sharp for Beginners course, and for video game development, you can start with C Sharp using Microsoft's course, but you'll quickly want to start getting familiar with C++. If you're brave enough though, you can jump straight into that using Codecademy's course. Month one. Programming Basics. All of the courses I just mentioned have their own curriculums, and it's worth following them, but in case they don't, or if you just want to be able to assess if it's a good curriculum, here are some of the terms that you should be looking to understand in this first month. Control Flow. Your code could do one thing if a condition is true, but it might want to do another one if that's not the case. Variables. These are names you give to values, like your name, age, or credit card number. Data structures. How do you organize and structure information in code? Functions. At some point, you're likely going to want to group a couple of lines of code so that you can reuse them. Basic algorithms. There are well-established topics in programming that are useful to understand to start thinking in code. A good example are sorting algorithms. Month 2. Object-Oriented Programming Depending on the specific course or tutorial you're taking, you might or might have not been introduced to object-oriented programming. This is a critical skill to start getting familiar with since most code in the industry uses this for their development and might take a while to get used to, but keep an open mind and try to associate it with real objects and their relationships to one another. A couple of concepts you'll want to understand are the following. Initializers or constructors, methods, inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. Honestly, for the last couple of terms, it's more important to just understand the ideas behind them rather than remembering the names. I always forget these and 90% of the time I do just fine at work. Remember, this framework is about prioritizing the most impactful skills. And you'll revisit this anyways when you're preparing for interviews, but no need to worry about that just yet. Month 3 design patterns. So far you've been looking at code at a zoomed in level. You can put together a bit of code to achieve the behavior that you're interested in. But most of the time, code itself is very subjective. And what you wrote might look entirely different from what I wrote, even if both bits of code achieve the same outcome. This makes it extremely hard to collaborate and communicate with others about code. Thankfully, developers have identified patterns that have been proven to work well in solving a common set of challenges. Getting to know these and being able to implement them is an extremely good investment of your time, because knowing when to use them and when not to will not only make your code a lot easier to scale, but it's also a good indicator of an experienced developer. Month 4. Projects, projects, and more projects. By now you hopefully have an understanding of how to code how to do object-oriented programming, and common design patterns to use in your own projects. At this point, my recommendation is to spend a good amount of time putting all of this into practice to consolidate your learnings before trying to continue learning new stuff. Remember how at the beginning we talked about finding what you're interested in? Well, now you have a basic set of tools to start building stuff around those interests. Is it gonna be a Minecraft server? An app that organizes your photos? A website that tracks your expenses? Or a Python script that trades Bitcoin for you? I'm not here to judge. Spending some time building something you're passionate about will not only make sure you deepen your understanding of programming in general, but it also builds a portfolio that you can use in your resume when applying for jobs in tech. This is also a very good opportunity to learn and try to master source control. It is basically a tool that keeps track of all the changes you made to your code, so even if you mess up, you can always go back to a working version. Git is the most popular one, and a good understanding of it will be critical when you start your software engineering job and need to work with other people on a project. Month 5. Broaden your horizons and fill in the gaps. Before diving into software 
software engineering job applications, it'll be useful to broaden your horizons a bit and fill in the technical gaps you could have missed when you were just learning how to code. The list I'm about to share with you is not all encompassing, but it includes some of the skills that I found most valuable in the industry that don't always make it in typical curriculums. To make it fun, let's make it a tier list. Testing, super important, S tier for sure. Databases, important for sure, but depending on your role, you might not need it for a good amount of time. I'm gonna give this one an A. Network basics. Unless your role is closely related to IT administration, you probably don't need to prioritize this. Let's go with the C. Source control. I brought this one up already, so it's clearly important and ask for this one. Scripting. It's definitely useful, but a lot of junior engineers I know don't have prior experience in scripting and almost every time I found it's totally fine to learn on the job. I think it's an underrated skill, so I'll go with a B. Continuous integration or continuous delivery. You probably won't be expected to implement a solution like this as a junior engineer, but a basic understanding of this really shows that you're already thinking about software at a bigger scale. I'll go with A. Threading. It's important to understand, but a lot of higher level programming languages handle this for you, so I think it's fine to dig deeper into this when you actually need to. I'm gonna go with C. Code documentation. Largely dependent on team preferences, so I'll go with C as well, but it's still worth getting familiar with if you have the time for that extra flair in your code. Memory management. Despite being abstracted away by a lot of programming languages, this is very useful to know so you can make optimizations and overall write good performing code. A. Agile methodologies. Not a technical skill, but learning about this branch of project management is really going to help you perform in teams and have significant impact outside of the technical realm. A for this one as well. Type safety. As you grow as an engineer and as you get to know more of a programming language, you'll start seeing ways to make code fail sooner. And this sounds counterintuitive, but writing code that fails at the time you're trying to build it is a lot better than finding out something's wrong after a successful build and your software is out in the wild. I'll go with a B just because it's probably not super critical early in your career, but if you find the time to learn about this, it can certainly be very impactful. Mastering your IDE. Really useful to know, will give you debugging superpowers and will boost your productivity, but there are other skills that admittedly will have more impact early in your career. B for this one. Using the terminal. This one's gonna be key. A lot of the tooling that you use as a software engineer is used through your computer's terminal or command prompt. Getting familiar with this is a great investment of your time, so yes for this one. At this stage in your career, there's no need to become an expert in all or any of these, but as time allows during this month, invest some time getting familiar with these and you will become a much more attractive candidate for tech companies. And it's also worth noting that despite aiming to spend a month in each of these areas, it's a totally flexible list. It's much more important to make sure you're consistently making progress than it is to try and cram everything in six months. You have the rest of your career to continue growing as an engineer anyway, so there's no need to rush your introduction to it. Okay, on to the last step. Month six. Preparing for interviews. Sadly, the skills you get from learning how to code and developing software projects will not be enough to get you a job as a software engineer. Interviewing requires its own set of skills and it's unfortunately not the easiest process. Coding interviews often focus on algorithmic problem solving and applications of computer science theory and fundamentals. A very good and comprehensive guide is contained in the book Cracking the Coding Interview, which is what I used to get my first software engineering internship with Microsoft. A good way to complement your preparation is through many hours of lead code and also by practicing your soft interviewing skills like storytelling to showcase your own experience. All the steps in this guide are important, but this is the decisive one that will land you the job in tech, so it's worth taking an in-depth look. Which is exactly why I made this video a while back, and I totally suggest you go watch it next if you're at this point in your own journey. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.